Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are at the Saturn City spaceport, following a man they believe to be a cousin of Prince Baccarati. Well, it's Benson, all right, sir. In the back, he looks just like Baccarati. All right, huh? Let's close in. Just a minute, Benson. Yes? I thought you promised to stay on Saturn. Oh, did I? Corey! Commander, it's Prince Baccarat. Get him, Happy. Hey. All right, Milenko, use your ray gun. That does it, Milenko. Get them aboard the ship. We'll give them a one-way trip to Planet X. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Spies from Planet X. <laughs> Say, gang, have you met the twin space patrollers who just moved in down the block a ways? A couple of real swell fellas and supercharged all the way. Well, now's your chance to meet them. Hey, here, Here they are. Hi, Captain Tuzo. I'm space patroller Tom Smith. And I'm space patroller Danny Smith. Man, oh, man, am I seeing double? You look alike and you talk alike. And we eat alike. We had our bite size checks today. How about you? Did I have my bite size checks today? Did I have a big bowl full of rice checks or wheat checks? The best tasting cereal from here to the outer orbit of Pluto? Well, you bet I did. I'm supercharged just like both of you. Now, Space Patroller, did you power up with that bite sized checks nourishment this morning? You know, no other cereal, flaked or puffed, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite sized form. That's why rice checks and wheat checks are official cereals of every Space Patroller in the universe. So, gang, take a tip from these supercharged twins. And every day before you blast off or school or play, have yourself a power breakfast with... White size rice checks! White size wheat checks! And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Spies from Planet X. In recent weeks, Buzz has successfully thwarted attempts by Prince Baccarati to sabotage United Planet's defenses. Space Patrol Intelligence has been convinced that Prince Baccarati, former ruler of Neptune, was holed up in his fabulous castle on the remote planet X, recouping his strength. But a Space Patrol agent has reportedly seen Baccarati in Saturn City. In response to this report, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are speeding toward the planet Saturn. Commander, if that really is Baccarati, he sure got a lot of nerve. All we know is that this man reported to be Baccarati has been dealing with the Zakra Importing Company of Saturn City. Zakra importing? It's a small outfit, practically a one-man operation. It's run by Emil Zakra. Seems to specialize in knickknacks and curios from the different planets. Well, do you think knickknacks would make Baccarati come all the way from Planet X and risk getting caught? I can tell you more about that, Happy, when we talk to Mr. Zakra. A few hours later, Buzz and Happy walk down a small side street in Saturn City. Most of the shops are closed for the day, except one shabby little store in which a dim green light casts a weird glow over shells of dusty vases, statues, and carvings. A replica of an outmoded spaceship hangs above the door. On it, in luminous letters, are the words, Zakra Importing Company. Well, here we are, Happy. I don't see anyone inside. Maybe they're closed. Try the door. It's open. Somebody must be here. Let's go in. Look at the dust. I wouldn't say business was exactly booming. Anybody here? Let's try the back room. Uh oh. Commander, look. The man on the floor behind the counter. Mm -hmm. I'm still breathing. Maybe all right. Somebody struck him with a blunt object. Is it Zucker? I don't know. Somebody's coming get behind this curtain, sir. Hold it, Baccarati. Hmm? Well, uh, you came back to finish the job, I suppose. The job? I don't know what you're talking about. His voice, sir. His voice is different. Oh, but he looks like Baccarati. What's your name? Why, uh, Baccarati. Huh? I'm surprised to hear that name after all these years. Most 
deep in love with Ben, and Thomas Ben. Are you related to Prince Baccarati? My cousin. An unfortunate family resemblance. I see. Well, take a look behind that counter and see if that man resembles anyone you know. Hey, it's Doc. What's that? You thought perhaps you could tell us. Why would I? What are you doing here, Mr. Benson? I was to see Doc on business. Were you expecting your cousin? No, I should say not. All right, Benson. We're going to get Mr. Zucker to a doctor, and we'll have a little talk at Space Patrol headquarters. While Cadet Happy scans the files for information on Thomas Benson, Commander Corey at Saturn City headquarters questions the man who bears such a striking physical resemblance to the evil Prince Baccarati. And you know absolutely nothing of your cousin's whereabouts. Nothing, Commander. We haven't had any contact since... Well, since he was forced to leave Neptune, we were never very friendly, even with boys. And your home is on Neptune. You're just visiting Saturn. Yes, a business trip. He's been here about a week. I've completed the check, Commander. Thanks, Captain. Well, that'll be all, Mr. Benson, for the time being. Oh, uh, you plan to be in Saturn City for a while? Why, yes. Yes, I do, Commander. I'm at the uh, Alcor Hotel. Good. I may want to talk to you some more. Call me any time. Uh, good night, Commander. Good night. Well, that isn't the craziest thing. That guy's a dead ringer from Baccarat, but he sounds different and acts different. What did you find out, Hunter? Oh, uh, he's Thomas Benson, engaged in the manufacturing business on Neptune. First cousin of Prince Baccarat. Go on. Changed his name from Baccarat to Benson, and <laughs> this will kill you, sir. At Prince Baccarat's request to save the family from embarrassment. Oh? Yeah, the, the, the prince didn't want to be disgraced by a cousin who worked. <laughs> does, uh, does Benson have any criminal record? Uh, oh, no, sir. Spends his spare time collecting little statuettes. Uh, Mercury Jade, mostly. Mm. Well, what about Zakra? Well, he'll pull through all right, sir, but he's still in a coma. He hasn't got a record either. I was hoping this cousin might be an important link in Prince Baccarati's spy ring. Somehow, Baccarati manages to get information to and from the United Planets and Planet X. Yeah, and with the space phone channels being monitored the way they are, and Planet X almost blocked There's right a out. leak somewhere, Happy. Well, it sure isn't Benson. Why, in a whole week, Benson's space patrol guard didn't see anyone get through to Benson that didn't have proper identification. Space patrol guard? Yes, sir. Uh, Benson asked for special protection around his home in Neptune City a couple weeks ago. Why do they want special protection? Well, he told the Neptune City chief he'd received an anonymous threat. Well, after a week, the chief figured it was just a crank and called the patrol off. Why didn't you mention that before, Hector? Well, gee, sir, I guess I figured it wasn't important. If Baccarati's cousin was spying for the prince, he wouldn't ask for space patrol protection, would he? Well, would he? Well, we're in Saturn City, Hap. I think we'll keep an eye on Thomas Benson. Meanwhile, far out in space, avoiding the regular space lanes... A space cruiser races towards Saturn. In it are Prince Baccarati and his scientific aide, Dr. Malengro. Your disguise is excellent, Your Highness. If I hadn't helped you make up, I'd swear I'd never recognize you. Mm, we'll pass a casual inspection. And since the space patrol has no reason to suspect that I'll be on Saturn, we'll have no trouble. Suppose your cousin Thomas doesn't have the jewels with him on Saturn. Of course he's got them. That's why he left Neptune and came to Saturn to hide the jewels. I know those threats would worry him, and when a man like my cousin is frightened, he doesn't trust his own judgment from one minute to the next. In trying to find a safer place for the jewels, he practically brings them out into the open? That's right. He thought it would be clever to conceal millions worth of jewels with a dealer in worthless junk like Zakra. But evidently, Zakra knew nothing of the gems. I'm sure your agent could have made him talk. Uh, my men bungled there. You should have known my cousin wouldn't trust a small shopkeeper with that much treasure. What Thomas had in mind, probably was to conceal the gems in various breaker bracks uh, without Zakra's knowledge. My agent should never have struck Zakra. At least, not until he was sure Thomas has completed his arrangement. Yes, Excellency. Now your cousin will be frightened away. But we'll get the jewels all right, Melania. I got to. I need them to pay off my agent. And to buy information, I need to keep ahead of Commander Corey. Oh, sure. Yeah. Five minutes out of Saturn today. You've made excellent time from Planet X, Your Highness. We don't have much to spare. Knowing Thomas the way I do, he's probably getting ready to leave Saturn to look for another place to hide his dream. Commander. 
Oh, yes, Captain. I just picked up some information about Thomas Benson. He's booked passage on the Space Queen for Neptune for tonight. He told me he was staying here on Saturn for a while. Well, let's get out to the spaceport and find out why Thomas Benson is suddenly anxious to return to At the Saturn City spaceport, Thomas Benson nervously paces back and forth in an almost deserted wing of the big terminal building, unaware that two men are watching his every move. Benson, please. The Space Queen will blast off for Neptune in 20 minutes. Gate 9 is now open. Passengers are requested to board the ship immediately. Just a moment, Thomas. What's your hurry? Well, I don't believe I know you. If you don't mind, I've got to get aboard. Well, don't you recognize your own cousin? Hmm? That's you. That's right. Your royal relation, Prince Buckelot. Now, if you'll be good enough to hand over those jewels. Jewels, I, I haven't any jewels. Now, come, come, Thomas. At my father's death, you received quite a fortune in precious gems, and I won them. But they're mine. He willed them to me. He willed them to Baccarati. You have renounced our noble name. You're no Baccarati. You're just plain Thomas Benson. Now I need those jewels to restore the name Baccarati to its former luster in the solar system. You're, you're mad. All geniuses are considered mad by the ordinary. And the stupid. I can put those gems to good use, Thomas. Now, hand them over. You, you, you don't think I'd be carrying them with me? Mm, perhaps not. And you're anxious to get back to Neptune. Therefore, the jewels are still there. Very well. I'll take you to Neptune in my ship. No, oh, you can't. You're wanted by the space patrol here if they catch they you. They won't catch me. You didn't recognize me, my own cousin. And Commander Corey walked within 20 feet of me while he was following you. Corey is here at the time? Yes. Oh, good. You can't possibly take me away with Corey here. Oh, and he knows who you are. He doesn't think you're Prince Baccarat. He knows who I am. And if you try to force me... I have an idea. Get into this vacant room over there. We'll change clothes. And I'll remove this disguise. Hurry up! Or will I have to use this? Attention, please. Gate 9 will close in one minute. Passengers bound for Neptune on the Space Queen must board the ship immediately. What happened to Benson, sir? Is that he told? He may have. If he leaves the terminal, he'll be followed. Commander, look. Going through that other gate. Is that Benson? Oh, right. That gate leads to the private cruiser blast off there. Oh, that Benson's pulling a fast one, huh? One half is following. Yeah. He's heading for the big private cruiser. Mm. He's in the shadow of this freight loading platform. Huh? All right, come on. Let's close in. Just a minute, Benson. Yes? I thought you promised to stay on Saturn. Step over here into the light. Uh, anything to oblige, Corey? Commander, it's Prince Baccarati. Get him, half. All right, well, then go use your ray gun. Uh. Need to be done, Melinda. Now, help me get Corey and the cadet aboard my ship. After we get the jewels, we'll give the commander a one-way trip to Planet X. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. That was an F-86 Sabre jet fighter in actual combat in Korea. I'm George Welch. Chief Test Pilot of the Sabre Jet at North American Aviation in Los Angeles. The Sabre is 37 feet long, weight 8 tons. The wings are swept back at a 35 degree angle, and their span is 37 feet. The top speed of the Sabre Jet is more than 650 miles an hour. I was lucky enough to make the first flight in the F-86 Sabre Jet. The first time up for the 50th, every flight is important. That's why I have to keep in top shape. I like to eat good food with lots of energy in it. Rice checks and wheat checks meet that test, and they taste exactly right. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now, back to the spies from Planet X. 
Prince Bakawari donned a disguise and came to Saturn to steal a fortune in precious gems from his cousin Thomas Benson, who closely resembles the evil prince. Thinking they were following Benson, Buzz and Hattie were overpowered by Baccarati and Dr. Malengro, and now are captives in the prince's private cruiser heading toward Neptune. In the compartment with them is their fellow prisoner, Thomas Benson. I'm telling you the truth, Commander. I was only going back to Neptune to protect my team. Why didn't you tell me that before? I realized I should have told you everything, but uh, I didn't want to bring my cousin's name into it. You see, I managed to live down the fact that I'm a Baccarat. I wanted to avoid unpleasant of this. Someone's outside the door. I can only work my hands free. Take it easy, Hap. Ah, gentlemen. Are you enjoying the trip? Well, Baccarati, uh, going to a masquerade? I presume my disguise. You see, we'll be landing on Neptune in a few minutes. And after my cousin gives me the jewels from his vault, I shall remove my disguise and return to my ship as Cousin Tom. Good going to leave me in Neptune City, then? Yes. When I have the jewels, you'll be of no further use to me, cousin. Why do you need the jewels, Baccarati? I understood you were rich. Yes, but it costs quite a bit to maintain my spy system under United Planets, Commander. And you must admit, it's quite effective. It has been so far, Baccarati. Frankly, I don't see how you do it. I mean, maintain contact between Planet X and the race. Mm, I might as well tell you, Corey, since there is nothing you can do about it. I have a robot receiving station on Saturn's eighth moon. Funny we haven't picked up any messages from it. Not at all. You, you see, there are no transmitters at the station, merely receivers. Yeah, but what good does it do for a robot just to receive messages? They're recorded on tape and automatically indexed electronically for the agent they're intended for. And your spies visit moon number eight and spaceships, get their information and instructions, and go back to work. Exactly. An occasional innocent-looking prospecting ship visiting a deserted moon never arouses suspicion. Very clever, Baccarani. Thank you, Commander. Uh, now, Cousin Thomas, I'll release you. We're about to land, Corey. You and the cadet will remain in the ship till I return. Dr. Malengro will see that you are come. A few moments later, two men of almost identical size and build get out of a surface car in front of a handsome dwelling in Neptune City. They enter the building and proceed to a large room. Nervously, one of the men presses a button in the wall. And the panel slides silently. You can see panels. Now open the safe. I can't remember the combination. I have a few tricks that will jog your memory. Two very sensitive electronic combination. Look, I'm so nervous. I, I don't think I can... Just it. try it and quit stalling. Open it. Yeah. The jewel for him, that new jewel box. Open it up. Not that I doubt your honesty, of course. Ah. Are you sure this is all of them? Yes. All right. I'll be running along now, Thomas. First, I'll take the precaution of using this ray gun on you. <laughs> After all. I couldn't have you spreading an alarm till I'm safely on my way back to Planet X. Removing his disguise, Prince Baccarati boldly returns to the Neptune City spaceport, boards his ship, and blasts off. Now, an hour later, with Dr. Malengro at the controls and the ship headed toward Planet X, the prince taunts his prisoner, Commander Corey. You see, Commander, everything is working fine. Here are the jewels. What did you do with your cousin, Baccarati? Oh, he'll be all right in a few hours. You know, for years I hated the idea that Thomas looked like me. It offended my sense of individuality. But now I'm glad of it. Oh, the approach warning. Something's wrong. Space patrol ship approaching at 2 o'clock, Your Highness. What are your orders? Space patrol ship? Confounded. Thomas couldn't have put an alarm in this quickly. Hurry, come out front with me. Get moving. See it, Your Highness? Of course I see it. That's why I brought Corey out here. We can use him to persuade the ship not to fire on us. Excellent idea, Your Highness. Wait. That's a robot scout ship. That's right, Baccarati. It's sending out electronic information on your position and vector. I'll fix that, Malangro. Use the proton gun. At once, Excellency. Hurry up. 
Test it before it can relay our vector. Stand right where you are, Corey. I got it, Your Highness. Lone Tooth Finn. Good work, Marengo. It certainly is. Now there won't be any doubt that the patrol ship will come after you. What do you mean? When that robot ship stops sending a space phone signal, a squadron will immediately come here to investigate. Marengo, change our vector. Where to, Your Highness? Any place but Lord Penedet. That's for Saturn Moon number eight. I can hide out there till we learn it's safe to return to Planet X. Come on, Corey, back to your compartment. Oh, he changed back to sir. Where's he taking him? He wants to hide out on Moon number eight. A smart move, huh? Yeah. Hey, what's that in your hand? Well, it's the jewel box. Uh-huh. Mind pick it up. Our Bacarati was excited over the space patrol. Huh? Oh, that's right. So that, uh, what good are they going to do us? I don't know. Except it'll worry Baccarati when he misses them. Can't stand up. Yes, sir. There's a locker under that seat. See if we can get it open. Oh. There's only some weapons in here. We Ah, uh, just some space suits. And a few tools. How many space suits? Huh? Three. And here's an combo port. Hey. hey, we could cut our way out of the compartment and rush Baccarati and Marengo. And they're armed. If we failed, it would be our last chance. Hey, with these space suits, uh, maybe we could get out of the ship. I know. Uh, through the cargo loading tube. Happy, get those suits out. I'll go to work in the door with the Atomo torch. And take the space phone out of the third suit. Well, there's no sign of a ship in the view scope, Your Highness. Good. And we've thrown them out. If we can reach moon number eight, we'll get in the clear. Manacore calling all space patrol units to the Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn sector. Listen, he is forced. How did he get a space uh, I don't know. The latter. He got into the locker. Those extra spaces. Come on, we've got to stop him. Commander Corey to all space patrol units. This Baccarati is heading towards Saturn moon number eight in a private cruiser. Be careful. The ship is armed with a proton gun. They're gone. They're out of the compartment. Your Highness, they must have left the ship. The cargo chute. They've escaped. Wait. Back to the control compartment. Hurry. I'm unable to give the registry number of Baccarati's ship, but it's a Class B cruiser. This vector is approximately 40 degrees sun regulus orientation. Confound it, Malengo. He'll have every ship in the universe after us. Yes. Look out the starboard viewport. There they are. I knew it. They're floating along with the ship. Now, what is that that Corey's call? Perhaps they haven't heard him yet. But they will, soon enough. The proton gun. That will fix him. But, Your Highness... Get out of my way! We've got to stop Corey. And that proton gun will do the trick. But your Highness will only... Attention it. all space patrol units. This is an emergency. But this will silence him. Commander Corey calling all units. This is an emergency. Continue to moon number eight. Someone may have heard his face. We'll change back to again. Perhaps we can proceed directly to Planet X. The space patrol will be. Oh, no. What's the matter, your Highness? The jewel. Well, where is the jewel box? I-, I had it in my hand a while ago. That's what I was trying to tell you, Your Highness. You put them there on the edge of the control panel when that robot ship appeared. Corey must have taken them when you weren't looking. My treasure. Uh, Corey had it when the proton gun blew him up. My jewel disintegrated. Why didn't you warn me? I do, Your Highness. You idiot! I have to think of everything around here. Now what are we going to do? You won't need those jewels now, Baccarati. Hurry! Take care of Malengro, Happy. Yes, sir. <coughs> All right, Baccarati. Are you going to be sensible, or can I fix it so nobody will mistake you for your class? You will. I've had enough. You can cover it, Happy. Yes, I said you were in those space suits. Sure you did. I didn't want you searching the ship for the space phone I was really using, so I used two suits as decoys. We're heading for moon number eight. You're going to show me that robot receiving station, Baccarati. A few hours later, Buzz sets Baccarati's cruiser down on the rocky surface of Saturn's moon number eight. Then he and Happy hold ray guns on Malengro and Baccarati as the four men clad in spacesuits step out on the airless Saturn. Keep moving, Baccarati. Stand at the foot of this big cliff, Corey. You and Malengro go first. Watch your step, Happy. That's quite a drop. Move along, Malengro. You're in my way, Your Highness. Baccarati, grab Malengro. He's falling. Ah! Grab that ledge. He's got it. Hurt. All right. Steady now, Malengro. I've got to pull with your arm. Happy, hang on to me. Yes, sir. All right, now. Pull. I've got you, sir. Now, just relax, Malengro. You're all right. Sorry, mess, Malengro. So watch it next time. Do not look to me 
see as though Baccarati pushed Malenko instead of trying to help him. Where is Baccarati? Smoke and rockets, he's gone. I forgot all about him, trying to save Malenko. Happy to be timed up and headed for the ship. You watch Malenko. I'll go up after him. Yes, sir. Oh, we're too late. There he goes. What nonsense. Hey, get that. Baccarati's willing to kill this guy to make a getaway, and Malengro says, good luck. I have an idea Baccarati won't get very far. Space patrol ships will be showing up pretty quick. Commander, the proton gun. Baccarati can blast us to bits. Not without the proton firing cell. Huh? I removed it from the gun right after the fight. I took that along with the jewels. Oh, boy, that sure saved our lives. Come on, let's get down to the receiving station. With that information, we can round up Baccarati's spies in a few hours. An action preview of next week's exciting adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. It's the day of the big parade on Terra. And just about every Space Patroller and his little brother have turned out to watch the fun. Man, it sure is a swell parade. Not... Hey, wait a minute. What's that coming down the street now? Why, it's the Space Patrollers Drum and Bugle Corps number five. All the way from Venus City, Venus. have their bite-sized checks today. And how about you, gang? You know, the best way in the universe to start off the day is with a big bowl full of bite-sized rice checks or wheat checks. Because no other cereal, flakes, or puff contains so much energy in such concentrated bite-sized form. Yes, sir, you're packing in plenty of vitamins and minerals with every delicious bite you take. And that means energy plus for you. And remember, Space Patrollers, September is better breakfast month. Getting a good big breakfast every morning is important because you haven't had anything to eat for hours and hours. So before you march off for the day, have yourself a better breakfast, a real Space Patrol breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have trapped one of Prince Baccarati's spies in a sub-basement in Jupiter City. No use, Happy. We could never break it down. That's right, Corey. You can't escape. Coming from that speaker up there. Sirkin, listen to me. You listen to me. I'm getting off this planet, Corey. Prince Baccarati tipped me off that a guided missile has been launched toward Jupiter City. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, Target Jupiter, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Wilson again present... Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kobach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Dick Beale. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when we check... Rice Checks and Good Hut Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> and be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.